Welcome to the Data Curation for Decision Making course. I'm Douglas Clark, your instructor for this class. I began my career at the National Security Agency and I was trained as a traffic analyst as well as a crypt analyst. So I got an early start with networks, graph theory, and data curation. In many ways, I think my way of looking at the world was completely changed by that training. I've also worked in large government programs, projects for Fortune 500 clients, as well as small systems integration projects for law firms, investment banks, and entertainment companies. I've worked in diverse cultures, ranging from an intense engineering environment as part of a classified reconnaissance satellite program to the ultimate in human factors work while building consensus for an ANSI standard. I'm one of the founders of the Project Portfolio Management Market, where I built a SaaS software company and ran it for 17 years. Lastly, I have 10 patents in natural language processing, an area of great passion for me. I have definitely thought a lot about data curation, governance, and building high-performing teams. This class is a synthesis of all that I have learned, coupled with the current state of science and research for each of the topics covered. Every major topic in this class can be found in Wikipedia. For all best practice recommendations, I only use practices that were espoused by more than one recognized expert. The topics of this course are as follows. As part of this overview, we will cover some definitions, provide some historic and modern examples of data curation, and then we will have a discussion about data, metadata, information, and knowledge, just to make sure we're all on the same page. The next section is data curation in depth, where we look at the three parts of data curation, selecting, organizing, and presenting data for decision support. Next, we will cover decision engineering with a discussion of systems thinking, an overview of complex systems, and then a deep dive into decision intelligence. Lastly, we will finish up with four case studies of the entire path from curating data, ensuring you have the right data to make the decision, thinking about the systems involved with focus on the complex systems, and then wrapping it all together and making a structured, engineered decision. There are no prerequisites for this course. At the conclusion of this course, you'll have the knowledge and skills to build data and information architectures for decision making. This course will teach you to first think of the decisions that you want to make, and then, in an organized fashion, build architectures that allow you to make those decisions. This course teaches you that decisions are first. Using this decision-first approach, you really understand how your decisions relate to the myriad of systems at play in the modern inter enterprise. This course will illustrate how a decision-first engineering mindset can help you make better decisions via our use cases at the conclusion of the course. These are the concepts that drive this course. Data is the new oil. A periodic study by the consultancy Ocean Tomo finds that 84% of the value of the S&P 500 is based on intangibles. It is very strange for us to think that, in the past, most of the value was based on tangible stuff, inventories, equipment, tangible products. Today's value is driven by things you can't touch, the ideas, the data, and information that drives our industries. Persistent data is the, ena is the enabler for much of the modern world. Name one business segment not dependent on data or being disrupted by persistent data. I can't think of one. Data, not information, represents ground truth. Ground truth is an intelligence world term where the analysts wanted to get the same timeliness and quality of data as if they were standing on the ground next to their target. This lexical knife between data and information is akin to physicists looking for the most elementary particles. If a datum is indivisible and has discrete attributes, there will be no arguing its meaning or purpose. As you combine data to make information, there will always be a loss of fidelity. Better to start with a simple known rather than a complex known. As always, Occam and his quest for simplicity applies. This world is just too complex to not be a systems thinker. The high degree of interrelatedness and interdependencies of modern business requires a system thinking vision. The ability to identify systems, their interfaces, and their key metrics is a required skill for today's business leaders. Most of the time when we say complex, we immediately become weary of something really hard in front of us. But actually, 
Complexity is where disruption starts. For the modern business leader, you want to spend most of your time in complex systems thought. It's really where the value lies. Lastly, we really understand now that decisions can be engineered pretty much like anything else. It's a process. The decision-making process is no different than in designing and delivering a new software feature. What we typically lack in decision-making is the rigor, and this course will help instantiate an engineering rigor in the decision-making process.